President Trump meets with President Xi. Did they reset everything? What does it mean for the markets and what's going to go on with the trade wars? What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard to Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday, June the 30th. The second quarter is over. And of course, this is Bubba's Bottom Line. And we have uh, our usual get, get together. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, President Trump and President Xi got together over the weekend. And it looks like they're going to put the trade wars on hold. What does it really mean? You know, I don't know what it really means. It's, it's hard to get a real feel. But I think the real key is how are the markets going to react to the information? And, and did they overprice it in? I, I think that is something uh, that may have been indeed overpriced in the market, that there would be some sort of a potential deal. Uh, we'll see, and we'll talk about this more in our market recap in the second half of the show. But in the meantime, uh, President Trump also visited the first U.S. president to visit North Korea as he left and crossed the line into the, uh, across the demilitarized zone. And I had a little bit of meeting with uh, Kim Jong-un and who knows, again, who knows? I, I think it's, uh, it's a great effort to, to try to get these things together. And, uh, uh, but you can see that there's a, a lot going on and, and, and the markets themselves, we'll see how they react to the, all the news, but uh, certainly, uh, obviously uh, the next, uh, I don't know, was it 18 months or whatever it is, is gonna be a pain in the ass. Uh, as we're going to have to watch these ridiculous debates from uh, the Democratic Party. And uh, of course, I don't think they're the Democratic Party anymore. I think they're the left of the left party. Uh, they're the Socialist Party, it looks like to me. Uh, and of course, when the question was asked, do we uh, pay for everybody's health care, including people that aren't from here, uh, illegal aliens, and everybody raised their hand, yeah, let's, let's pay. Uh, again, <clears throat> let's just tax to death the, uh, the U.S. taxpayers. Let's just take all their money away so that we can support everybody, even people that have not come into this country illegally. Let's continue to do the same thing because why not? We have the ability to print as much money as we want. Uh, you know, it, it's an amazing thing that you watch when you listen and you watch this, these people move farther and farther to the left. It is, it is, it is a sad state of affairs. And where is a good libertarian candidate? That, that's what we need. We need somebody in the middle here to take charge because certainly, I don't know that Biden can make it. I don't, you know, he, and not that I like him anyway. I mean, I think he's, you know, I'm not a big fan, but certainly uh, he's, he's the closest to somewhere in the middle. Uh, but of course, you know, he's been nothing but a failure anyways. So, you know, he, him and, him and George Romney can get together or and add Mitt in there, and they can have five failed or five or six failed runs for president. So again, I think that shows you uh, what we think about that. And of course, again, I thought the I thought they were rather comical and, and watching them and, and watching the commentators. And of course, hey, it is what it is. And of course, uh, you'll react, and I'm sure I'll get plenty of cards and letters and emails. From, from those of you who want to tell me what a piece of crap President Trump is. And of course, hey, you know, all I can look at is, is that we're trying to move forward and, and it is what it is. And, but I do want to know what really happened to respect for the office. That, that's, that I think is a, is a bigger, more serious issue. I thought that we were Americans first, okay? And then we, put, we chose our party, okay? Uh, and I thought that, you know, whether you like the president in office or not, whoever it happens to be at the time, that you would hope that things went well and that the economy improved so that we could move on to the next and then we would have the next president as we have done in the, in the in past history. But of course, I guess this is the new changing times. It's rather, let's flush the economy. Let's flush everything. Let's make it as hard as possible and waste as much money as possible so that we can uh, we can run interference into the current president because we don't like him, okay? Well, again, you don't have to like him. I predict that he would win in 2015 on Maria Bayaroma's show, and I'm gonna predict it again, he's gonna win in 2020. Like it or not, he's gonna be your president, and, 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 and everybody who hates him, God bless you, okay? You, you can be, you'll be stuck with him for another four years, and you can continue to waste money, waste time, trying to get 
him out of office. You ain't getting him out. And when you look at it, you can say all the bad things you want about the man. The man has, has done more to break down the swamp than any president in my lifetime. And I go back, my first voting year was 1972. So again, I go back and, and I voted both sides of the ticket, but certainly <laughs> there, there ain't nobody on this left side that I could even vote for, okay? Uh, but for those who don't like the country, get the hell out. That's the bottom line, okay? Uh, Raponi or whatever her name is, the soccer player, get the hell out. We don't need you here, okay? If you don't want to be here, go. that's the beauty of America. You can get out if you want to get out, okay? So, you know, nobody needs you to be in this country if you don't want to be here, okay? But so, unfortunately, it still is the greatest place in the world. Okay, he has the greatest opportunity for every person to succeed. And whether you are a natural born American or you're a, 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 a converted citizen that came here, everybody's got an opportunity. But of course, you want to complain, you want to whine instead of trying to make it better and get through each and every cycle. And God bless you, get the hell out. That would be that would be the best thing that I can see for all of you. Okay. Uh, okay. Instead of all your whining and crying, okay, and, and trying to make it worse. Just leave. Nobody wants you here anyways. Okay, that, that's truly the bottom line. But in the meantime, okay, uh, you know, we, we've got, uh, you know, we're back with the, the Mueller subpoena, okay, and of course they want to get him. What's he going to say, and, and, and how is he going to spin this? We already know what a crappy job he did with his first press conference, okay, which was, which was a total joke and ridiculous, okay. But again, uh, that's, that, this is what we have to put up with in, the, in this whole entire most ridiculous issue ever. Okay, but let's let's continue to spend millions and millions and billions of dollars on garbage instead of saying, "Hey, why don't we help take care of the homeless in this country? Why don't we take care of these things and take that money elsewhere?" But of course, that isn't the that is not the agenda of of, of those there. So we'll see what that genius has to say uh, once again and 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 understand what the problem is. But of course, China's trade surplus is drying up. Okay, what does it mean? It means that the sanctions are working. It means the tariffs are working. It means that many of the people that were in China are moving out of China. We're seeing movement to Vietnam. We're seeing movement to India. We're seeing movement to other places because, again, it's easy to do. And as you're going to be prepared for it, then we don't have to worry about the issues. Okay, and we don't have to worry about the problems with China because we can eliminate them. Okay, yes, they are the second biggest economy. And yes, they are very powerful, but of course, we still are the most powerful nation. We still have the biggest percentage of the world GDP. We still have the most money and the most time. So again, you can do, you can see it as you wish, but for right now, I think that the president is doing exactly the right thing. And it, I hope he doesn't give in, okay? And I hope he doesn't back down because again, I think you've seen what is now happening on the border when he stepped on to Mexico and said, hey, we're happy to do business, but if you don't stop your people, your illegals coming into our country, then you're going to be tariffed. Okay? And I think it's great. I, th I think that's the way it should be. Okay? Again, where is it written that we have to give away everything? Uh, again, I, I, that's, where, uh, that's where I run into a problem. Okay? I mean, quite frankly, personally, I'm tired of paying for welfare for people that stay home and have a couple of beers and a, and a line of Coke. Okay. Again, people that truly need disability and welfare, I'm more than happy to help. Okay. But people that are just taking advantage and scamming the system, which is, which has been the way it's been, I'm not interested at all. Okay. And I think this is the things that we have to continue to, to deal with and work around. So we do have our big jobs number coming out this week. What does it mean? I don't know. I, I, I think, as I've said before, I do think that we are in the very early stages of a recession. Okay. Uh, I, I think this is one of the things you see with the Federal Reserve and, and everybody wanting cuts. You know, it, it's very interesting. The banks went through their stress test again. Now, I would love to, to dispute the results of those stress tests, okay? Again, I, obviously I can't, but what the, A, what difference does it make? The banks are going to get bailed out regardless if they fail again, which is a, an, another idiotic stance, Okay. And, and that is not uh, of the current administration. That goes back years and years and years and years. I mean, that goes through them all, right? This is the problem with our system. We continue to bail out 
and, and let these guys make horrible decisions and then bail them out. Okay, and then still let them make all the money. But I would venture to say that many of these banks are not anywhere near to be able to pass the stress test and probably in danger because of what's going on in the entire system, which is why you're seeing this constant range or talk about rate cuts. And of course, and, and a little shock wave to the markets last week was when Bullard came out and said, well, maybe we're only going to cut a quarter point. Well, obviously there's an issue because if we have such a strong economy and everything is going so well, okay, why is there a need for a rate cut with the stock market at all time highs? Okay, that is always something that, that has to be wondered, okay, by me is, is it doesn't make sense. There is no logic behind having to cut rates in a market that is at record all time highs and everything else is going well. Now, of course, interest rates continue to fall because, of, of course, there's not a direct demand for money. However, and this is where I think the kicker is, is the banks are once again buying up loans like they were giving them away, okay? And they're buying up good, they're buying up bad. This is going to be the old package together again, the package deal, right? Uh, the, the the security package. And, and of course, so I've got people that I know that are, 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 are lenders. They're, they're not subprime lenders, but they're, you know, they're, they're secondary lenders that get much higher rates and to, to who they lend to. And they tell me they're selling every loan they can get their hands on. And not only that, but they're making two to three basis points on every loan that they're doing. So they're locking up a huge commission immediately and taking no risk on the notes. Okay. You tell me that doesn't sound like a problem to you. That doesn't sound like a repeat of what happened in, in 08 or in any other major collapse in this market, in this history. Okay. So again, but this goes back to the ridiculousness of, of our Federal Reserve and their willingness to continue to print money to basically destroy our cash, okay? Because again, if you if you read the creature from Jekyll Island, again, and I'm not saying that he's right or wrong, I'm just saying, you know, a lot of the logic that he talks about does make sense, okay? And when you when you look at the bigger picture, okay, it continues to work out the same way. But yet we end up with lesser dollars because now you've got the major currency war battle going on, okay, as we race to the bottom. Okay, why? Well, China's going down because they want to absolve or absorb the tariffs, so they just lower their currency, making the dollar able to buy more. So it's a zero sum game. Okay, now you've got the ECB again with Super Mario. They want to lower. So what's that going to do? That has to put pressure on our dollar. I mean, again, it's just a game. And, and the game at the end of it is central bankers have no interest in you and me. Central bankers have interest in destroying all currency and destroying everybody except for the upper 1%, okay? That's really what it comes down to because the only people that can really benefit from what's going on right now are the extremely wealthy, okay? Because they can get the money for cheap. They can do all the things they want. They can accumulate all the, all the depressed properties. They can accumulate everything. So at the end of the day, it, it ain't good, okay? But this is when you allow, okay, a, a Federal Reserve, to, to, to deal with these issues, okay? And you allow them to continue to print money at, at will, okay? And bail out. My point is, is that if, if you can't make it in any other business, go broke, okay? Just bail out the depositors. That's the way I see it. In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horowitz on Sunday, June 30th. Bubba's Bottom Line will be right back with more after the break. What's up all? Hey, you know, we've got these equity portfolios kicking ass and taking names and our futures portfolios. You know, if you want to hear those recordings, look, again, I don't make any promises to anybody. I'm just telling you, these are the best programs ever that go along with my hedging program. Okay, you want to see any of those recordings? You want to get involved? You want to protect your money in the next big ambush? All you do is email me at Bubba at BubbaTrading.com. I'll send you the recordings for free. There's no obligation. You don't have to pay for anything. You don't have to buy anything if you don't want to. I Honestly, I really don't care if you buy or you don't buy. Okay? I know what I got. I know what I'm doing. And I know what the people that are with me are doing. So, hey, you want, you want in? Come on aboard. Check it out. If not, no worries. In the meantime, don't forget about our high school program. We're getting ready to go back to school again. Believe it or not, school's just out for the summer. We're getting ready to go back. Uh, in the meantime, you can help us out at Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. That's Patreon dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. Now let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Welcome back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz with you. And of course, it is Sunday, 
June the 30th, and a short week this week. You've got uh, July 4th on Thursday, which means that Wednesday will be a half a day, which means Friday will be totally gone, and it will be the jobs number. So it should, it should be interesting. Okay, my guess is is that this is going to be a lousy number, but they'll revise back uh, the last number. But again, who knows? Again, you, uh, trying to figure out whether the government can count or not is is another major task in life. But in the meantime, last week markets were uh, basically flat, right? They were down, but basically flat, right? Really, as we had the big moves up the week before, made some new highs. You had a market that consolidated. Uh, a little bit lower, but again, I, nothing to be certainly concerned about. Uh, I think the one interesting thing that I noticed in my looks is the fact that the Russell was so strong. Okay, Now, A, they rebalanced it, so that could have been part of the reason. B, it has been the weakest, so the big bounce could also be from the weakness. Okay, But I think the other thing that it kind of signals to me, Okay, again, I have no factual basis here. But Russell companies, small caps, are not as affected by what's going on with the tariff situation, with what's going on with the dollars and so on. Because basically, small caps are basically U.S. companies. Okay, so And to see them get suddenly strong, okay, and again, there's other reasons for it, but to see them get suddenly strong based on the rest of the markets, that could be a tell sign that they don't think that we're going to resolve with China. And again, I have no idea. I'm, that's just an opinion from what I noticed from watching. But I thought, interestingly enough, on, on Friday, the close of the market, uh, you know, we had a big rally at the close. But really, the, the big rally is not what I'm talking about. For those of you who trade options, the implied volatility, the actual VIX was down. Makes sense, right? Markets were up high. But the implied volatility in the spiders was extremely high. Okay. And again, in my opinion, you cannot make money buying options at these prices, at the, at the vol that's there, based on where it usually trades. So my guess is tomorrow morning, if we, if we open anywhere within flat to 1% up to 1% down, all those options are going to collapse, okay? And all that air is going to come out of those balloons because right now, projected on option pricing, we're expecting a 2% move tomorrow, okay? Now again, you know they were pricing in, based on what was going to happen with President Trump and President Xi. So we'll see. Hey, again, I would say you could get a big move. Right now, I, I couldn't even guess which way they're going to get a big move. Because, again, a lot of the action, as you know, that I talk about this all the time, is priced in ahead of time. So, And I think that that's so we'll see if they caught leaning to the wrong side based on what happened with the actual meeting. Now, I thought very interesting last week, you know, the grain markets, which we've been bullish in buying, uh, and we're, by the way, we're long equities as well, but... Uh, the grain markets, which we've been bullish and buying, and they had some reasonable action last week and kind of pushed up late. And, of course, Friday they had their progress planning report, and and the corn and wheat got clobbered. Okay? And I actually said, uh, look, I, again, I don't hide from anybody. I actually said that I was going to be long going into those reports because they had come back down to some levels I thought were reasonable. And, of course, bang, there they go. And there was one initial spike up. Uh, to 460, and then corn came a tumbling down, I think close somewhere around 420. Again, I think these are great buying opportunities. I think we shook out a lot of the weak hands. But again, this is why, again, trying to anticipate the report is ridiculous in its own right, okay? Because again, what did we know, okay? We know the market and the traders were leaning to a bullish report. So how bullish could that report be? Okay, obviously, by price action, it was. Now, soybeans did manage to rally, but of course, soybeans have been extremely weak. So it's not a surprise that they rally. But again, I think there's an outside chance that we get a big market this year. So I am not at all concerned about the action. And I would look to be a, a more of a buyer tomorrow, depending on, on the price action. Uh, I think when you look at the meats, okay, uh, cattle has looked like it has bottomed, okay? You know, we had feeders that had a big a big move up on Thursday and pretty flat on Friday. Uh, live cattle was a little bit lower on Friday. But again, it looks like they're in that bottoming pattern. You know, we don't expect them to go straight back to highs after they're bottoming. We all, our biggest concern is that they go sideways and consolidate without taking out the lows, which would leave us bullish. Now, on Thursday, there was the, uh, the hogs and pigs report. Okay. Now, we have said repeatedly here 
that hogs were in a bearish formation. I've said it on RTTV. Everybody who wanted to say, well, what about the swine flu? What about this? What about that? I said, well, all I have to do is look at the price action. When this first stuff first broke, hogs were at 100. Okay, now they're at 70. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the price and the money is telling you that there is no issue. Okay, there is no swine flu epidemic that we're concerned about. And of course, the report that came out, which I never read reports, Okay, but I did get an idea what this one was, and we we have four percent more than last year, and the report was was more bearish to the market. And of course, you saw Friday, hogs spiked up early and collapsed. So again, we like cattle, both fats and feeders. Okay, we don't like hogs. We're looking to sell hogs on, on any rally. Gold, you know, made a had a big blow off to the upside and tried to get out, and again spent the rest of the week kind of coming back down. But again. We would expect gold somewhere around 1380, 1390 to hold. Okay. We're bullish gold still. We're still long gold. And we would look for a pullback here. This is not a surprise. Okay. Again, one thing we should never be is surprised at what markets do. Markets are going to do what markets are going to do. So we should never be surprised. In fact, we should expect it because remember, in markets, the improbable happens once a week, the impossible happens once a month. Okay. So the actual action after the blow off in gold up to almost 1450, back down, perfectly natural. Crude, a huge move to the upside. Again, we're long crude, although you know we, obviously we took a little bath on the last round. But again, I, I don't like it, but my algorithms say I have to be long, so I'm long. Now, it looks like they're going to fail at 60. We had a late day smashing on Friday, okay? Down into, I think it closed somewhere around 58. We got down in the high 57s. Uh, after trying to get 260. Uh, again, you've got OPEC tomorrow. What are they, I, I, to me, OPEC means nothing. They're nothing but a crooked organization. So I don't know what they're going to say. And now that Putin's involved with them even more. I mean, again, the fact is, is this is not 1979. Where we're at mercy to OPEC. Okay. This is 2019. We had our own oil. We don't need OPEC. We don't need them. Why we're even involved, why we're even discussing it is beyond me to begin with. But again, that's it. I mean, we're the biggest producer in the world. We do not need to deal with, with their crap, okay? Bonds continue to charge higher, meaning obviously rates are coming down. We saw 30-year mortgage, I think, down to 3.75. Yeah, not bad. You know, again, I got to get some of that 30-year money. I mean, I might just go out and buy a house so I can get the loan. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's, it's really comical. OK, and yet people are waiting for them to go lower to, to refinance. I mean, again, couldn't they go lower? Absolutely. There's there's one thing we know for sure in any market. Too high is never high enough and too low is never low enough. You know, the things happen all the time. And that's, I think, something that you have to be more prepared for. OK, and understand if you understand the market function. OK, uh, which I, I think is, is is important. OK, I think that is the whole deal. OK, and I think that's one of the big problems I have with uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the network stuff. OK, and I'll talk about that in my commentary. But in the meantime, you've got, uh, you know, Bitcoin had a nice big move last week. OK, got up as high as almost 14,000. But all the others are crawling up with it. This is no surprise. right? We were buyers. We were talking about Bitcoin when it was in the 3000 levels. OK, so again, did I expect it to go right to 14? No, I, again, I would never say I expect it. But again, looks like it should have a little bit of pullback and it looks like it'll make another run once again. Again, this is something that has now become, you know, a a way for people to move money out of a place like China, like India, OK, United States, but also a place of new stored value. Believe me, this is going to be real. You've already got now. You know, as as the banks made, well, it's crap, it's crap, it's crap forever, okay? And then all of a sudden, okay, oh, it's not crap anymore. Well, maybe the banks are already buying. Maybe the banks are buying down there at 3000 You know, it wouldn't put it behind uh, beyond any of them who manipulated silver for years to do something like this as well, okay? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if someday you heard the man who called Bitcoin rat poison if you found out that he owns it too, okay? I won't mention his name, but I'm sure you know who it is. Uh, but in the meantime, it wouldn't surprise me if he owned it as well, okay? Because this is not something that he has to report. This is not a regulated business yet by the exchanges. So there's not as many rules, okay? But I think the interesting point here is you heard Steve Moore, 
Okay, and Steve Moore's a nice guy. I mean, again, I'm not a big fan of, I don't think there's an economist that I'm a fan of, okay? Because I don't think they report the facts correctly, okay? I think they're too worried about their models and their Phillips curve and, and this and that and what it says in the book versus knowing how to fix it on the fly, okay? But in the meantime, he's talking about, well, maybe we should talk about now getting central banks for crypto for cryptocurrencies. And I go, the whole purpose of the crypto world is to get away from the central banks. The whole purpose of the crypto world is to get away from having a central banker have control over the money. Think about it this way. There is no cleaner market right now in the world than the crypto world because you can trade it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, okay? There's a buyer and a seller, and there's obviously a bookie in the middle taking their commission, okay? But in the meantime, true buyer, true seller, nobody can manipulate price other than by buying or selling it. So we'll see. We'll see how it works out. In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line. I am Todd Bubba Horowitz. I'll be right back with my commentary after the break with more Bubba's Bottom Line. Well, everybody, we had another monster week in our equity portfolio and in our futures portfolios, and it just continues. The hits keep coming. Uh, I know there's a drawdown coming, but I, I can't fight it and tell them no. But if you'd like to hear what we're talking about and see what it's all about, certainly you can email me at bubba at bubbatrain.com. Check it out. Want to buy it? Great. If you don't want to buy it, it's no big deal. Again, if anybody doesn't want to be with me, I don't want them anyway. So it's not a big deal at the end of the world. But if you want to check it out, email me at bub at bubbatrain.com. And of course, don't forget about our high school program at Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. That's patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading. Let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line and my commentary. Welcome back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horrors with you. And of course, we always give you a little bit of what we're thinking. And as you know, or maybe you don't know, but I do a lot of media myself. I do for stuff for Fox. I do stuff for uh, I do stuff for RTTV, CNBC Asia, uh, Kitco News, uh, Phoenix TV of China, uh, RFD TV. So I do a lot. And again, I, I can do this for you. I am really getting frustrated and sick of the bigger networks. Okay, I know they're they're there to sell advertising dollars. Okay, I, again, I get I get it's a business. Okay, but it, it really is frustrating to listen to them speak and talk about markets that they have no clue about markets. Now you happen to know, or maybe you don't know, but I've got some inside information here because obviously I've been in a studio, I've been in and and done some stuff right online. On I mean on uh, you know on on air with these guys, and I had to explain to them the trades that we we're trying to make. Okay. So again, they don't understand the markets anyways, but of course we know that the common investor is always gonna be a bigger watcher when the markets are going up. You know, when markets are going down, nobody wants to watch. So all they put on there are these bullish jackasses. Okay, and again, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with being bullish because as you know, I've said here since the day, for inception of time, okay, that as an investor, you should always be 100% invested. Okay, you should be hedged with my program, but even if you're not, you should be able to stay invested because the market will compound your money because it does go up an average of eight and a half percent year over. But to listen to these jackasses talk, okay, to listen to them drool on about what's going on when they don't look, you know, last week the Dow's up, the Dow's up. In the meantime, every other market was getting hammered. The Dow's up. Okay, who cares about the Dow? Dow's 30 stocks that people only go to when they're, when they're nervous. They're dividend paying stocks. So I'm tired of listening to their BS. I'm tired of listening to them chortle on like they have a clue. And the only people they get on are A, people that don't put their own money in the game. Okay. Me, I'm the only guy on on TV that only trades my own money. I don't have a business. I'm not an advisor. I don't take other people's money. I don't invest other people's money. I don't get paid for other people's investing money. I invest my own money. Okay. And that's what I've done for 40 years. Okay. But that's all they get on. And, and the advantage to all those is what? They need you to be in the market because the only time they make their commissions when they're in the market. So let's get the bullers on there. Let's not tell both sides of the story. Let's just tell the buller side. And then you bring in a guy, a uh, former professor at Maryland. I, again, I won't mention names, but you could probably figure it out. And they're talking about Bitcoin and talking about gold. And, and well, Bitcoin is crooked and it's a criminal and it's, 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 it's a big bubble and it's worthless. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. In the meantime, if you were trading Bitcoin, you could have made a lot of money. Okay. You could have lost a lot of money. You could have made a lot of money. But the crypto world, it may not be Bitcoin, but the crypto world is coming. 
mark the mark the take down. It is coming. There is no question about it. Okay. Again, you think about this. Okay, with crypto. Okay, you can instantaneously transfer funds from one party to another. When you do a bank wire, A, you got to pay for it. B, it takes forever to get there. And if you don't get it done by 2 o'clock, it doesn't get there tomorrow. Okay, whereas in five minutes, I can transfer you money. So let's not kid ourselves. But again, I don't mind somebody with an opinion that still doesn't believe it. That's fine. But at least give both sides of the story. Okay, and, and they talk about the big bubble in cryptos. Okay. But nobody ever talked about, you know, cryptocurrencies went from 19,000, the, the Bitcoin, down to 4,000, 3,000, okay? Nobody talks about that gold went from 1,900 to 900. Is that not the same kind of bubble? It's, it's almost a similar percentage, is it not? So please, let's get, if you're going to report news, let's get both sides, because a market is a buyer and a seller. Let's get two sides of the market on air so that it gives the average investor who is depending on you to make a decision, at least give them a fair shot to get a fair understanding. This is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horowitz. Everybody have a great week. As always, I appreciate you being here. We'll see you back here tomorrow, obviously, with Bubba's Daily Update. And of course, next Sunday with Bubba's Bottom Line. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks so much. We'll see you later.